Hey, ready to make our shopping list? Absolutely. Let's start with essentials like milk, eggs, and bread. Good idea. Should we add some fresh fruits and vegetables? Definitely. Let's get apples, bananas, tomatoes, and spinach. How about some protein? Chicken, beef, or fish? Let's go for chicken breasts and salmon. Right. Now pantry staples. Pasta, rice, and canned beans. Yes, and some tomato sauce. We can make pasta dishes easily. Snacks, chips, nuts, or maybe some yogurt. Let's grab a variety. Chips, mixed nuts, and a couple of yogurt flavors. Good call. What about beverages? Coffee, tea, or maybe some juice? Let's get both coffee and tea, and some orange juice for breakfast. Got it. Cleaning supplies. Detergent, paper towels, and toilet paper? Absolutely. We don't want to run out. Also, add dish soap. True. Any specific toiletries or personal care items? Toothpaste, shampoo, and body wash. Great. Do we need any household items? Maybe light bulbs or batteries? Oh, yes. Add light bulbs, and let's grab a pack of AA batteries just in case. Now, do we have a list for the fridge? Cheese and some cold cuts? Yes, add cheddar and mozzarella. For cold cuts, let's go with turkey and ham. And fresh herbs? They can add flavor to our cooking. Good thinking. Let's grab basil, parsley, and cilantro. Any specific type of bread you want? Whole wheat or maybe a baguette? Whole wheat sounds healthier. Add that to the list. We're doing well. Do we need any frozen items? Maybe some ice cream or frozen veggies? A pint of chocolate chip ice cream won't hurt. And frozen peas for quick meals. Perfect. Any special requests for breakfast? Cereal, oats, or maybe pancake mix? Let's get a box of granola for a change. And pancake mix for lazy Sundays. Excellent. Looks like our list is comprehensive. Ready to hit the supermarket? Absolutely. Let's grab our reusable bags and head out. This shopping trip is going to be a breeze. Agreed. With our list in hand, we'll be in and out in no time. Let's go. This house looks promising. Spacious rooms, modern kitchen. What do you think? Yes, it's nice, but the location matters too. How far is it from your workplace? About 20 minutes. The neighborhood is quiet and has parks nearby. Good, but let's check the other options before deciding. I prefer a place closer to public transport. True, transportation is crucial. Let's consider this one next. What about the size of the backyard? 
It's a decent size, but I've always dreamed of having a garden. Do you think we can plant some flowers and vegetables here? Absolutely. The soil looks fertile. We can create a beautiful garden. And the sunlight here is perfect for plants. That sounds wonderful. Let's see the next house. I hope it has a good balance of indoor and outdoor space. Agreed. This one seems to have a cozy living room. Imagine spending evenings here, reading or watching movies. Yes, the living room is important. But we also need to check the bedrooms. Are they spacious enough? I don't want a cramped space. I understand. Let's see the bedrooms. Oh, look at the size of the master bedroom. It's perfect, and there's even a walk-in closet. That's impressive. But remember, we're not just buying for now. What about the resale value? Will this house appreciate over time? Good point. This neighborhood has been developing. The property value should increase. Plus, there are new schools and shops opening nearby. That's a positive sign. But I've read about checking the plumbing and electrical systems. We don't want any surprises later. True. Let's make sure to inspect those aspects thoroughly when we visit the next house. A well-maintained home is crucial for long-term satisfaction. Speaking of maintenance, do you think we can manage the upkeep of a bigger house? I don't want to be overwhelmed with cleaning and repairs. I share the same concern. A bigger house means more responsibilities. We should find a balance, enough space without it becoming a burden. Agreed. Let's see the next option. I've heard the school district here is excellent. It's crucial for our future family plans. Definitely. A good school district is a priority. It ensures a quality education for our kids and enhances the property's value in the long run. But let's not forget about safety. I want our home to be in a secure neighborhood. Have you checked the crime rates in this area? Yes, I did some research. This neighborhood has a low crime rate. Safety is paramount, especially when we plan to start a family. That's a relief. Let's consider this one seriously. I can already picture our future here. How about you? I can see it too. It ticks most of our boxes, and I believe we can turn this house into a warm and welcoming home for our family. Great. Let's finalize our decision. I'm excited about this new chapter in our lives. Me too. It's a big step, but I'm confident we've considered everything. This house feels like the right choice for us. I'm glad we went through this process together. Let's make an offer and start this exciting journey of building our home. Your air conditioner has a faulty compressor and a refrigerant leak. To fix it, we need to replace these parts. The repair cost, including labor, is $500. $500? That's more than I expected. I might consider buying a new one. I understand your concern. Repairing an old unit can add up. However, a new air conditioner is a significant investment. Let me break down the benefits. Okay, please explain. I want to make an informed decision. 
a new unit is energy efficient, lowering your electricity bills. It comes with a warranty, ensuring worry-free cooling for several years. Plus, modern units have advanced features like programmable thermostats. Those are good points. But what's the cost of a new one? A basic model starts at $1,000, installation included. It might seem high initially, but considering the long-term savings and improved performance, it's a worthwhile investment. True, energy efficiency matters. But $1,000 is a bit steep for me right now. Can we explore more affordable options? Of course. We have mid-range models around $800, still offering energy savings and reliability. It's a compromise between cost and features. That sounds better. What about installation? Is it included in the $800? Yes, installation is included. Our team ensures a proper and efficient setup. Also, new units often come with financing options to ease the financial strain. That's helpful. But I need to consider my budget carefully. What's the warranty on the $800 unit? It comes with a standard two-year warranty for parts and labor. Additionally, there's an extended warranty option for further peace of mind. Two years isn't bad. And how about maintenance costs? Will a new unit need frequent repairs? New units require minimal maintenance, reducing repair costs. Regular cleaning and filter changes are usually sufficient. It's a hassle-free experience compared to older units. That's a relief. The $800 option seems reasonable. Can you give me some time to think it over? I want to weigh my options before making a decision. Absolutely. Take your time. I'll provide you with a detailed quote for the $800 unit. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. We're here to assist you. Thank you for your understanding. I appreciate your help. I'll carefully consider the options and get back to you soon. No problem at all. I'm here whenever you're ready. Whether it's a repair or a new unit, we aim for your satisfaction. Feel free to reach out anytime. I haven't been feeling well lately, headache, fatigue, and a persistent cough. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you measured your temperature? It could be a fever. Yes, I did. It's slightly elevated. What should I do? You might need medical attention. The symptoms could be a sign of something serious. It's best to consult a doctor. I was hoping it would pass. Do you think it's necessary to go to the hospital? Given your symptoms, it's better to be cautious. A doctor can assess your condition and recommend the appropriate treatment. I'm hesitant about hospitals, you know. They can be crowded, especially now. I understand your concern, but your health is the priority. Many hospitals have safety measures in place. They'll take precautions to protect patients. You're right. I shouldn't neglect my health. But what if it's just a common cold? I don't want to waste their time. It's better to be sure. If it's a cold, they'll advise you accordingly. But with your symptoms, it's crucial to rule out more serious conditions like flu or COVID-19. That's true. How can I make an appointment? 
Do I just show up at the hospital? It's better to call ahead and explain your symptoms. They might guide you on whether to come in or suggest other measures. It helps them prepare for your visit. Good point. I'll call them. What if they recommend a COVID-19 test? I've heard it's uncomfortable. It's a precautionary measure. The discomfort is temporary and it provides valuable information. Many people undergo it without significant issues. I hope it doesn't come to that. What about the cost? I don't have health insurance. Hospitals often offer payment plans or financial assistance. Don't let the fear of expenses deter you from seeking help. Your health is the priority. I appreciate your reassurance. I'll call and schedule an appointment. I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. That's the spirit. Early detection and proper care can make a significant difference. Let me know if you need any help or if you want someone to accompany you. Thanks for being understanding. It means a lot. I'll keep you updated on how it goes. Please do. Take care of yourself. And remember, seeking medical help is a responsible and necessary step. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks again for your advice and support. I'll make the call now. Hey, I'm hosting a Christmas party this year. Would you like to come? Oh, that sounds great. I'd love to join. When is it? It's on December 24th, Christmas Eve, at my place. Starting around 7 in the evening. Perfect. What kind of party is it? Casual? Formal? It's a casual gathering, festive but relaxed. Wear something comfortable, with a touch of holiday spirit. Got it. Anything specific I should bring? Just yourself and some good vibes. I'll handle the food and drinks. If you want, you can bring a small holiday treat or a game to share. Sounds easy enough. What about the duration? Is it an all-night affair? It's flexible. You can drop by any time after 7, and we'll keep the party going until people feel like heading home. No pressure to stay late. Nice. I like that. Will there be music? Maybe some Christmas carols? Absolutely. I'll have a festive playlist. If you have any favorite holiday tunes, feel free to suggest them. We can make it a group effort. Sounds like a blast. How many people are you expecting? Around 15 to 20 friends. It's an intimate gathering, so we can all enjoy good conversations and share some holiday cheer. Great size. And what about food? Any specific theme? It's a mix of holiday classics and some finger foods. I'm planning a potluck style, so there'll be variety. I'll send out a list for people to sign up with what they'd like to bring. Potluck is a fantastic idea. Count me in for that. Anything else I should know? We'll have some games, like Secret Santa. If you're interested, draw a name and bring a small, thoughtful gift for that person. It adds a fun element to the evening. Secret Santa sounds fun. I'm in. 
Do you need any help setting up or organizing? Thanks for offering, but I've got it covered. Just bring your positive energy and enjoy the festivities. Looking forward to having you there. I appreciate the invite. It sounds like a wonderful Christmas celebration. I'll mark it on my calendar and make sure to be there. Perfect. Can't wait to celebrate the holidays together. If you have any questions or need more details, feel free to reach out. Looking forward to seeing you at the party. Definitely. Thanks again for the invitation. I'll be in touch, and I'm looking forward to a fantastic Christmas Eve celebration. Hi there. I'm a student at this university. Are you also a student here? Yes, I am. I'm pursuing a degree in psychology. How about you? That's interesting. I'm studying computer science. It's my second year. Nice to meet you. What made you choose computer science? Well, I've always been fascinated by technology and coding. It seemed like a dynamic field with lots of opportunities. That's cool. I've heard computer science is in demand. How are you finding it so far? It's challenging but rewarding. I enjoy problem solving and creating software. How about psychology? What drew you to that field? I find the human mind intriguing. Understanding behavior and helping people through counseling or therapy is my goal. That's admirable. Psychology plays a crucial role in understanding ourselves and others. Any specific area in psychology you're interested in? I'm leaning towards clinical psychology. I want to work with individuals dealing with mental health challenges. It's a field where I can make a positive impact. That's important work. Mental health is gaining awareness, and professionals like you contribute significantly. What are your thoughts on university life so far? It's a mix of challenges and excitement. The workload can be overwhelming, but the learning experience is valuable. How about your university experience? It's been quite a journey. Balancing academics and social life can be tricky, but I've made great friends and enjoyed exploring different aspects of my field. Finding that balance is key. It's nice that you've made friends. I'm still navigating the social scene. Any tips? Just be yourself and be open to meeting new people. Attend events and clubs related to your interests. That's a great way to connect. I'll keep that in mind. Speaking of which, are you involved in any clubs or activities on campus? Yes, I'm part of the coding club and also the tech innovation group. It's a fantastic way to apply what I learn and collaborate with fellow students. That sounds exciting. I've been thinking about joining a club too. Maybe something related to psychology or mental health awareness. That's a fantastic idea. There are often psychology or mental health related clubs on campus. It's a great way to meet like-minded individuals. I'll look into that. On a different note, any favorite spots on campus? Like a go-to study spot or a hangout place? I love the library for focus study sessions. But when I need a break, there's a cozy cafe nearby. How about you? 
the library is my go-to as well. There's a serene atmosphere that helps me concentrate. But I'm still discovering hidden gems. There's always more to explore. If you ever need a study buddy or someone to show you around, feel free to reach out. University life is better when shared. Thanks, I appreciate that. It's nice to have someone familiar around. Let's definitely stay in touch and maybe grab coffee sometime. Absolutely. I love that. Looking forward to more conversations and coffee together. Hi there. Have you traveled much? Hi. Yes, I've been to a few places. How about you? I love traveling. Do you have a favorite destination? Definitely. I fell in love with Paris. The Eiffel Tower and the romantic atmosphere were unforgettable. Paris is magical. I experienced that too. Any unique experiences there? I stumbled upon a quaint cafe, met locals, and tried escargot. It was an unexpected delight. Escargot is adventurous. I once got lost in Tokyo but discovered hidden gems. Any travel mishaps for you? Oh yes, Mr. Train in Switzerland. Ended up exploring a charming village instead. Unexpected turns can be rewarding. True. Unexpected moments often become the best memories. Ever tried something new while traveling? In Thailand, I tried scuba diving. The underwater world was mesmerizing. Have you tried any thrilling activities? Zip lining in Costa Rica. The rush and the lush jungle view were incredible. Any place on your travel wish list? Iceland. The landscapes seem out of this world. What's your dream destination? Machu Picchu in Peru. The ancient ruins and breathtaking views are calling me. Any travel advice you swear by? Pack light. It makes exploring easier. What's your go-to travel tip? Learn basic phrases in the local language. It helps break barriers and enhances the experience. Any travel-related pet peeves? Delays annoy me. Once missed a connecting flight. What's your travel pet peeve? Overcrowded tourist spots. Ruins the charm. Any hidden gems you discovered off the beaten path? A tranquil beach in Greece. Away from crowds, it felt like paradise. Found any hidden gems yourself? A quiet cafe in Kyoto. Traditional tea and serene ambience. What's your most memorable travel meal? Street food in Vietnam. Pho and banh mi. So delicious. How about your most memorable meal? Paella in Spain. The flavors, the atmosphere, unforgettable. Do you prefer solo travel or with company? Both have merits, but I enjoy sharing experiences. How about you? Agreed. Solo for self-discovery, but with company for shared memories. Any cultural shock moments during your travels? In India, the vibrant chaos and colors overwhelmed me at first. Embraced it eventually. Ever experienced cultural shock? Yes, in Japan. Bowing customs, it was a cultural shift. 
Adaptation is key. Any travel rituals or habits you follow? Always collect a local souvenir. A little piece of every place. Do you have any travel rituals? I journal every day while traveling. Captures the essence. What's your most cherished travel souvenir? A handmade scarf from Morocco. Holds memories. How about yours? A carved mask from Bali. Art with a story. Do you prefer luxury or budget travel? A mix. Splurge on experiences, save on accommodation. And you? Exactly. Balance is key. Ever had a spontaneous travel decision that turned out amazing? Booked a last-minute flight to Barcelona. No regrets. How about you? Road trip without a set plan. Discovered hidden gems. Any country you'd love to revisit? Italy. The art, history, and pasta. I want to explore more. How about you? Japan. There's always more to discover. Absolutely. Let's explore more someday. Safe travels.